My name is Lenia Trilla Diaz. I'm a human rights uh, program officer at the Civil, uh, for Civil and Political Rights Center in Geneva. And we have today with us uh, Professor O'Flaherty, who is a member of the Human Rights Committee of the United Nations. And we would like to ask Professor O'Flaherty what, uh, what were his feelings about the session uh, during the review of Norway, how the session unfolded, and uh, what, which areas you think were the key areas that were raised in the re review. Yeah, well, it was a very good exchange with the, uh, with the Norwegians. And Norway has a very good record of delivering its reports right on time mm -hmm. uh, and delivering good quality materials. They, they really get the reporting process mm -hmm. of how a report should talk about the reality, mm -hmm. the, the law, the practice, the challenges, the problems and the achievements. They do all of that. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we had a great basis for our discussion. Mm -hmm. We also had an excellent delegation good, high-level, well-qualified expert group that came from uh, Norway mm -hmm. uh, and who were able to engage us in a substantial dialogue. Mm -hmm. We were talking to the right people. So this made a very good basis. Oh, no, I mustn't forget the NGOs. Uh, a surprisingly large group of people from civil society made the journey, mm -hmm. gave us excellent briefings mm -hmm. and, um, and, and really helped us identify key issues. Uh, similarly, the National Human Rights Institution mm -hmm. uh, was represented at a senior level and played an important role. So all in all, a very good context. Now, uh, having said all of that, of course, Norway is no different to anywhere else on earth. It's got its challenges and its problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we did focus in on those. We focused in on 12. Uh, as people will see when they read the outcome document, mm -hmm. the concluding observations. Uh, so 12 issues across, uh, let's call them infrastructural issues of where human rights is in the legal system mm -hmm. through to specific problems in various sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, let me mention three areas uh, that uh, took particular attention and interest. These are what we call the, um, the areas in which Norway is expected to report back within one year. Uh, it doesn't always mean that the most important issue, but they're the issues where something solid could be done within a year uh, and to improve the human rights situation. The first of them has to do with the infrastructure, uh, the, the, um, uh, the basic arrangements in place for human rights. And uh, there we're concerned uh, about the ongoing discussion on re-establishing or reforming the National Human Rights Institution. Uh, the concern there is that we're not, it's not clear what's going to happen. And, Norway did receive a warning not so long ago uh, about uh, losing the so-called A status uh, under the Paris Principles. And so red flags have gone up and it's critically important that Norway, uh, in whatever changes it's considering, makes sure to protect the A status of its national human rights institution. So this was one of the three. A second of the three had to do with the use of restraint in mental um, health care facilities. Uh, there does appear to be a problem of coercive measures or restraint measures being used. Uh, it seems beyond what might be medically unavoidable. Mm -hmm. And so we raise this as something that we'd like Norway to look at mm -hmm. and see how it could come up with alternative ways of, 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 of dealing with medical situations. Mm -hmm. uh, and similar to, related to that, we've also uh, made reference in our recommendations to the need to strengthen the oversight system for uh, mental health facilities. The third and the final area that I'd mentioned to you as identi identified by the committee as requiring a one-year response had to do with information before us that children can be held in detention uh, for up to 90 hours in the uh, juvenile justice system. And this is a very high, uh, this is a, a rather protracted period to hold a child. And so again, the committee is asking Norway to look at this situation and see how alternatives to detention could be used in, in the particular case of children. And in your opinion, how could um, a civil society utilize these useful uh, recommendations? Mm. Well, there are 12, as I said, there are 12 concerns and 12 recommendations. Mm -hmm. I've only named three. Mm -hmm. um, civil society has a critical role to play in bringing attention to them and in using them as a reference point in their own discussions with the government about, about bringing about changes. Mm -hmm. uh, the concluding observations form a very strong law-based analysis which anybody in human rights advocacy can rely on as, as a firm foundation uh, for the work uh, to, um, to, 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 to encourage the changes. Um, and I'd say, by the way, for civil society, and I've got no concerns, if the quality of the work done in Geneva by the NGOs 
uh, tells us, it, 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 what that tells us is that there's a good, strong civil society in Norway. But what I'd say to them is that the work really only begins now. Getting the information before us is just the start of the story. Uh, what really matters is taking the concluding observations home uh, and working with them over the next few years to bring about the change that they recommend. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for your useful comments. Thank you. Thank you.